So after pulling all of the brakes off and everything, um, I was able to figure out that someone used 69 Camaro, I mean they use them for Novas, Camaros, um, other chassis, but they used spindles from those um, and basically the whole brake assembly from a Camaro or Nova or whatever. So I had a factory um, part number on the disc brake, um, the rotors are 11 inch, like so on. and trying to kind of piece together, hoping I get everything perfect um, the first time with ordering new parts um, doesn't make a lot of sense. So what I'm actually gonna be doing or what I've actually done already is order a whole new front disc brake kit for these. And so it'll come with a new spindle, come with a new backing plate, come with the, the caliper brackets, everything for the front end here um, I need for this and I'm going with the 11 inch rotors because for one I'm trying not to spend too much money on this thing um, but also too like we're only aiming to maybe run like a 14 or 15 inch wheel um, with that so it's not that big of a deal so that's going to be there um, I ordered um, church boys racing parts so tubular upper and lower control arms the coilover um, for this for this conversion too so that later on when we talk about doing like sub you know replace the subframe and stuff like that I really like the church boys um, modular front end because I can take those parts and already bolt them to the existing um, structure but then they bolt directly to the to the subframe for church boys so I can piece it together rather than dumping six or seven grand right off the front so all good I mean that's a <laughs> that's a good amount of body filler oh my goodness that is uh, not confidence inspiring for making this a something pretty down the line, but we'll see. Well, I don't want to get too far into this and see how far this goes, which it is what it is, like, it's got, obviously this whole section is all body filler. It's even got a crack in it right there. Um, I can see on the inside of the door for the filler panel, they just have a big square piece of sheet metal that has like one or two tacks on it. And so they probably just tacked it and then just slathered this whole thing. Um, but it also might make it easier to the point where I can put the door handles back in because it's not going to take a lot of work to grind that away. Um, so we'll see. So right now, I'm kind of chiseling away to see how bad it is because everything at this point is like pretty much lower than what that will get to, but, but it's pretty rough. Um, makes other considerations of maybe just get a whole new door rather than dealing with this, but we'll see. I'd like to do as much myself as possible, but things have to be, re there has to be a good reason to do it um, because time and money are somewhat interchange interchangeable depending on how much time and how much money. I mean, this is not gonna be the most fun in the world. Uh, let's face it. As you can see, they like booger welded. Basically, they either, they, they stick welded, acetylene torched it, um, this plate in here, and it is so deep. Like, so, so bad. 
that this was the main hole for the door. The other door piece, the little hole for it is probably over here, but this was the keyhole right below it. And that's also the same thing, torch welded. But the whole thing is just a plate behind here that like takes up all of this space that, <laughs> I mean, they didn't need to do that, but this was also done probably so long ago that it's just, it is dumbfounding, truly dumbfounding. But let's see what else we can find here. All right, so yesterday I got a little frustrated and stopped recording what I had going on with this car. But I wanted to finish up detailing what we found on some of the bodywork. So I'm gonna peel up the cover here. So I went to the passenger side and started sanding down a couple areas I was very suspect of. And we got here. So this is the passenger side rear. For one, you can see there's <laughs> layers upon layers of body filler. But all of these holes I was able to see from the inside panel. Um, and I was like, either that was where there was a bunch of, there was a long body trim piece and they just filled with body filler or something else. Well, it turned out to be something else. At some point in time, this whole side on the passenger side, um, cause these holes you can see on the inside of the door, they go all the way across to towards the front here, sorry, towards the front here on the door. And the body filler takes and has little worms that are just filling in on the inside of the door. And it sucks because that means that it's gonna be, I mean, it doesn't really suck. I was already planning that the quarter panels were gonna need to be replaced anyway. But it changes what I understand about the history of this car because on the inside this right side at some point in time was hit but not hit all the way back and then you have a big crinkle right here in the trunk which was possibly from getting hit in the rear because this rear panel behind the bumper at some point in time was welded and fixed. So there's two, two accidents, which that may have also caused this crumpling inside the driver's side quarter panel for the trunk. Now, mind you, I've already known for a while that realistically, the floors are gonna need to be replaced. But with all of these other things going on on the exterior and the consideration of all the work that we're gonna be doing is that the floors in here, especially the passenger side, right? The floors in here are gonna need to be done first and then I will probably move back and get this rear structure here as well and literally replace from the tow board all the way through the rest of the trunk floor as literally the first thing that's going to be happening for this car. Am I happy about that? Not really. I didn't want to get into doing any major sheet metal work until we figured out the engine and transmission stuff, which I still need to find a transmission, but it also kind of gives me time to sort that part out because a lot of these sheet metal parts are really not all that expensive. And so I can get, I'll just need to have my dad come down with his welder and we can start, well, I'm gonna need to get a couple tools first so I can cut out that metal cleanly and get that going. But 
last couple weeks have been really hard to get more momentum going because this last week we had a leaders retreat the week before that i was in napa tomorrow i'm heading back to napa so i can help my friend um he had hand surgery and he's got a bunch of work that he needs to get done for his winery or his vineyard um so i'm gonna go run up and do that take the miata and drive up there i mean the roads are beautiful up there so like i can't complain i might video you know video blog a little bit of that and whatnot but a lot of stuff going on but i don't have the sheet metal to do the work anyway so i gotta start putting in orders for that but we already have the suspension front suspension order the front brakes ordered in fact the front brakes should be here today um and that's exciting i already got a box from classic industries for brake lines and rear hardware for the drum brakes um once once we get through this then awesome and then it looks like next week i have to go to texas and trying to juggle this while having a job that requires me to travel a lot is going to be very interesting but i'm still so excited and so motivated to make this project happen um the goal is to have this running and driving by the end of summer that's gonna be a tight one for me um but that's what i'm hoping for and then i'd like to drive it tune it make sure everything's good and running well um with the driveline stuff and then we'll pull it and then by the end of the year be able to go ahead and plan out the rear suspension and everything so that's where we're at.